Welcome back to What RT Noobs for General Disturbance. This is a GW Tiger Porsche. It's the Tier 8 German SPG. It's located on the north spawn of El Halouf and it's under the command of Maddak. Now, it's got a 21 centimeter howitzer. I can tell that from the gun barrel. There's no muzzle brake and he can do 1100 alpha penetrating 53 millimeters of armor and 12 meter burst radius. But he's got one of the slowest starties in the game and a very long reload as well 38.81 seconds and he's off and it's going to take him almost as long as it'll take the other members of the team to get to the north west corner for him to get over to the edge of the map yes just crossing one grid square can take an ages Well, he's almost there and he's almost loaded. And it looks like he's going to try and fire from within the town. Within the, within the village. Okay, he's ready to go. And he's now looking for a target. And it looks like he's going to do a big, quick bit of uh, counter battery. He's having a quick look near the town. There is two enemy RT, an FB207 and a GW Tiger P on the enemy team. And he's having a quick look to see if he can see any tracer from them. He couldn't, so he's decided to go after the tanks on the other side of the map. I reckon he can get a shot on that TVP VTU. Going for the FB4202. Lands the shell near him for 385 hit points. Nice long stun as well. He's just having a quick look for Tracer. Seeing as that's uh, the enemy arties and FB207 and GW Tiger P, they are some of the slowest arties in the game. They're not going to wander very far from the spawn point. They'll probably go to the edge of the map. And he's found another target right in the centre. It's a Hawk. And he got two, 329 hit points out of it. And he was killed the next second, so he's picked up some stun assist. Okay, he's looking for where he's going to fire next. ISM and a Jag Tiger 88. Having another quick look for counter battery. That's the most likely spot near the village, but probably off to the side of the map. In that little corner. Ah, we just saw a Tracer. And so I think he's a little bit further over from there. He'll be in the dip at the edge. I reckon if you go about about two or three centimeters to the left and about two or three centimeters down, that's it. He's getting closer. He's waiting for that shot. There you go. And he's killed the FB207. It was the faster firing of the two RT. But now we've got a an infiltrator, a P44 Pantera, tier 8 Italian auto reloading medium, trying to get up into our cap area. Going to be loaded almost momentarily. There he is. He's gone up the other side. And we might be able to get a nice shot into him. He's got very thin armor. Loaded. Rounds out straight away. Big hit, 403 hit points, he's badly damaged. Shouldn't be too much for our guys to take him out, but there's a Type 59 coming up really close. And I don't think the other guys have actually spotted that, or at least, oh, they are reacting now. The ISU 152's reacted. Our other RTs fired at the Type 59. Our Scorpion G just took a big hit. Now, looking over the other side of the map in the northwest corner, the enemy is driving our guys back. Going to try and get a shot on this Jagdtiger. Fires around in and direct hit. 
Looks like they got rid of the Type 59. So we're now going to be helping with the defense. Oh, Progetto's managed to get round the corner. And the Type 6 T69 saw, saw him, but he goes down. The Star's going to try and get that Progetto. Meanwhile, we're going to go after the Yang Tiger 88 again. Rounds out. Direct hit. 374. Good hit. Right on his front. He's heavily stunned. That's going to affect his reload. Okay, next shot needs to be on that Progetto. He's in reload. He's reloading all three shots. The star doesn't seem to realize that. He, you could drive in now and take him out, but these guys just behind him, they're the ones who are being a bit of a problem. Okay, we're loaded. Kill the T-34. Rounds out. Kill shot. And the enemy are now falling like nine pins. Yeah. That Progetto is still there though. Uh, but he gets wiped out by the ISU 152. Which means there's now only four enemies remaining. Mad Dax got two kills already. It'd be nice if he can get a third. There are two other players who've got uh, three kills. They could platoon to get a Brothers in Arms. In fact, he could probably splash kill that FB4202. But unfortunately, the shell lands short. And all he does is stun him. But the others are moving up to take the kill. There's only three enemies remaining. Scorpion G. An SE-130PM and a GW Tiger Porsche. Now he's having a quick look to see if he can find the GW. Somebody's saying that there might be an enemy in that region. He's aiming for the bush. He's got plenty of ammo spare. He's going to fire one into that bush. Being in the village actually does help him a great deal because um, he's not in a place where the enemy is likely to find him to counter battery him. It's not a place that's chosen often to fire from because it's proximity to the North Passage, the uh, passage that runs from west to east towards our camp. Uh, if you sit in the village, you're more likely to be seen and taken out of the game. Okay, everybody's sort of like moving up. Using the valley for cover. They don't want to go the conventional route because obviously those two tank destroyers are very good at shooting at long range. And they can do an awful lot of damage. In fact, working as a pair, they can double tap you for virtually all of your hit points in just a matter of seconds. And there's one of the enemies. It's the Scorpion G. And I think he was anticipating getting some shots on the guys coming down. And he's seen the AMX M449 and the T26E4. He's pulling back. Round goes out. Oh, yes. 500 hit points. He got a direct hit on the Scorpion G. I thought the other shell was his. But in actual fact, that was the one from his teammate in the SU-14-2. Unfortunately, we just lost the Star 1. Our teammate in the Progetto could actually come across the map. He could go over to the other side and he might actually help the team. He's just sitting up there and the rock's not doing anything at the moment. There's the Scorpion again. Moving position. Long flight time for the shell. He's working out where he's headed. Fires the round in there. Should be a hit. 115 from a near miss. 
all counts and he goes down so picks up the stun assist we still don't know where that su 130pm is though we did lose our m449l and we lost our t26 and there's the su 130pm and he's just taken out our scorpion g we know the general vicinity where he is and now we really do need that Progetto to come over from our side of the map to help the other guys. There's the RT, the GW Tiger P. He fires around in at the rocks, but there's the GW. And he goes down to the SU-14 too, so he was awake. But now we really need that Progetto to move over to the other side of the map. Because I don't think either of the RTs on this team are going to be able to get over there anytime soon. Remember, we've only got four and a half minutes left on this game. The ISU 152 is moving up. The Progetto is still sitting over on our side of the map and he's just not moving. And we're firing in at the bushes, but I'm not so sure it'll be there. Come on, Progetto, move. Don't just sit there. Okay, Mad Dax loaded. On the SU-14-2, he's saying the Progetto's AFK. That's why he's uh, not responding at all. And there's the SU-130 PM. We've got a chance. Oh, the ISU-152 does it for us. And <laughs> wins the game. And I do hope they reported that Progetto for being AFK and inactive. Let's have a look at the end of battle stats. See how we got on. And it's an ace tanker for Maddak in the GW Tiger P. He managed to get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got 13 in that one. A gauze medal for doing more damage than 10 times the hit points for his own vehicle. And a confederate medal as well for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. And his win eight for that game was 5,637. Let's have a look at team score. Didn't get the highest damage in the game. Note that went to the ISU-152. It was well deserved. He got 4,471 hit points for damage. And remember, he's the guy who stopped that um, um, Type 59 who was trying to creep up on our uh, guys at the cap. Uh, then comes Maddak with 3592 and the highest score on the enemy team was their AMX 5100 with 2350. When it came to kills, it was that ISU-152 again. He got Five kills, one third of the enemy team. The SU-14-2 got three, so did the T-26E4, and Maddak managed to get two kills. High score on the enemy team was the SU-130PM with three kills. When it came to base XP, it was the ISU-152. Again, he's got the top, he's got the clean sweep. 1,336 base experience points for him. Maddak managed 1,159, and they were the only two players who managed to get above 1,000 hit points of damage. Uh, hit points, hit points, no, XP, <laughs> experience points, and 876 went to the T26E4. Yeah, sometimes you do get those two confused, but yes, they're the only ones who actually did the job, and they deserve to get ace tankers. Both of them must have been ace tankers. Let's have a look at detail. Maddak fired 13 rounds, got 5 direct hits, 0 penetrations, but 11 splash. Damage of 3,592 hit points, all of it at more than 300 meters. He damaged 8 of the enemy, killed 2, and did 965 hit points of stun assist off 9 stuns. On a premium count, he earned 54,135 credits, and after ammunition resupply and these shells are expensive, he still took away 27,095 credits. He picked up 31 bonds. I think that's because it was uh, 25 from Veni Vidi Vici, and because I think it may have been a tier 10 game. So a quick check. Was it tier 10? No, it wasn't tier 10 game, but it was still a good game all the same. So he still picked up um, 
um, the amount of uh, bonds needed for the gauze, which is three, and I'm trying to work out why he's got 31. <laughs> well, he's he's got 31 anyway. And 1,738 XP, no multipliers, so that's all the experience points he took away. Yes, I think that's 25 from Benny VD Vici, uh, three bonds from the gauze, and that should mean that he's actually got three from the Confederate. It's very odd. I can't see why he's actually ended up with 31, but it's not what I expected it to be. Okay. Well, well done there to Mad Dak for getting an ace, a gauze, and a confederate. If you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel. Hit that little notification bell. The uh, will get let you know when a new video comes out. We try to put as many as we can out before Christmas. We're trying to reach to 5,000 videos before that time. And it looks like we're on track now because uh, we've got less than 150 to do. And there's slightly more than 10 days. So... Yeah, I think we can do it just, uh, but it's going to take a lot of effort. So, um, yeah, please do um, hit that bell so you get alerted when the new one goes up. Thanks for watching.